Delta, this is NA1SS. Have you loud and clear? Help me, over. Oscar Romeo 4, ISS is ready. And you're coming in a little broken. Can you say again? Over. down to five minute increments, very busy from about 7.30 in the morning we have a, a meeting and 7.30 in the evening we have an evening and between those hours uh, we're scheduled as I said, our prime task uh, is to perform science uh, and we usually have someone on the ground who's familiar with the experiment helping to talk us through that but we also have to uh, live uh, up here so we also have to maintain the space station we have to clean it we have to take care of one each other if anyone's uh, not feeling well or sick so uh, because of that we also have to do several other things throughout the day over Andrea, the weather is very controlled up here. We keep the humidity uh, around 30-40% uh, humidity temperature, usually somewhere around uh, you know, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, about 20, 21 or so degrees Celsius. Um, and so it's very controlled. When uh, I return to Earth, uh, you know, I, I will say we've been watching the, the weather up here and seeing uh, the storms and things like that. And from up here, they you know, I've seen a couple hurricanes and they look kind of beautiful, but I know down on the earth they can be uh, very destructive, so it's a different perspective. Over. Carolina, I think the greatest sacrifice has been to uh, my family. Uh, I, you know, I, I have two uh, twin girls and a husband and I'm away from from them for uh, half a year to be here and also just uh, throughout my time in the military leading up to coming to NASA did a lot of deployments where I was away from friends and family. Over. Donna, I, I do believe life exists. You know, humans are incredibly special. Just the fact that we uh, can create something like the International Space Station and travel travel to space, but uh, I do think there's probably life of some form. You know, up here I can see the universe is just so expansive and so vast, and to, to think that there's nothing else living out there seems unimaginable to me. Over. I think something I'm really passionate about in my career is just the aspect of exploration and, and pushing boundaries. Um, every time we've done that, and we continue to do that up here with our experiments on the International Space Station, and as we uh, venture back to the moon with Artemis, every time we explore and push, push the boundaries, we uh, learn more about our home planet, we discover technologies that end up helping us, and I just think it's a uh, human nature to explore. Over. I think the uh, biggest uh, mental or physical challenge, I'd probably say mental challenge, uh, you know, when we're scheduled, as I said, uh, very detailed down to the five minutes, and, and if I fall behind on that, I get, you know, very invested sometimes in the experiments we're doing, and the other day I was doing an experiment I uh, really cared about and got behind schedule, and uh, we had to cancel it for the day, and then that to me, that's really hard when uh, I feel like I got behind on something and caused us to, to not be able to do uh, part of our mission. Over. Esteban, I think 
think one of the most surprising moments was actually when I first got to the International Space Station. We've trained probably hundreds of hours uh, on the mock-ups on the ground, but it turns out when you look at something upside down or sideways, it looks completely different. And I first got up here, and I didn't even know where I was or which way I was going, and that to me was uh, really a lesson on just how important perspective can be and how much things can change with a different perspective. Over. Roberto, I think uh, it sounds uh, silly maybe, but uh, a moment uh, for me that was really special uh, was when I first got up here. There were 11 of us on board, and we were from five different countries, and just getting together and having a meal and sharing uh, this moment of being in space orbiting above the Earth, the views that we have, and sharing that with people from all over the world, but it felt like we were just uh, brothers and sisters. Over. Continue to do those science and technology competitions. Uh, something I tell people is don't ever do something just because you want to work at NASA. Do things because you're passionate about them and, and you love them, and I think the path will uh, define itself. Over. Nicholas, I wish I could describe to you back on the Earth from here. Uh, and see it, it is so incredibly beautiful compared to, you know, the the black with just a couple um, spots of light out there, and and just being up here with, as I said, people from all different nations, it makes you value our home planet and and value unity, unity and harmony. Over. Angela, that's a great question. You know, I think a lot of people think about uh, astronauts and they think about the technical expertise and um, that stuff, but something that's also really important is we're living with uh, just, you know, a few other crewmates for long periods of time in a fairly confined area. We can't just go outside to get air when we want. We're kind of stuck up here together. So really something that's really important is uh, being a good teammate and being a leader when you need to be a leader and being a follower when you need to be a follower. And of course, uh, being healthy and strong are really important as well. Over. Daniel, you know, I'd say for a long time it was the Saturn V, the rocket that brought the uh, astronauts to the moon. But now we, we're in a very exciting time where we're developing a lot of new rockets to include the space, space launch system that NASA is developing, the SLS, as well as uh, the Starship and the SpaceX developing. So there are a lot of uh, really powerful rockets, more powerful than ever before, uh, to bring us back to the moon. Over. was sparked when I was just in elementary school. I did a book report on Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman in space, a Russian cosmonaut. And that is when I first decided I wanted to become an astronaut. And it took almost, I think that was almost 30 years ago now, and I finally made it to space. And in that time in between, uh, you know, I studied hard. I studied aerospace engineering in college and in my graduate degree. And 